Hello everyone. Welcome to Eat Art Space, the pop-up gallery from a dining room in Appalachia. I'm Jocelyn Matthews. This is my home. I operate this alternative art space out of my house in the little corner of East Tennessee. And today I have Bonnie Kelly coming to talk about her work, which is now in the gallery. So we're, I'm very excited to have her. She's going to join us in just a couple of minutes. But a little bit about the gallery project. It started in 2020 when all the spaces in the region were closed down and artists didn't necessarily have access to viewing and selling their work. And um, not, a lot, not every artist has a website or a means to sell online. So um, I transformed the dining room space into a gallery and ran some of these Instagram lives to sell work and promote local artists from our region of Appalachia. So that's the story of Eat Art Space. And if there's anything in the gallery that you see on this live video that you would like to bring home or purchase, you can visit the link in bio at eatart.space and we have a lot of works available. While we're waiting for Bonnie, let me show you around the gallery so that you can see a little bit of our work. And let's see here, I'll flip it around. So we have two artists in the gallery during this show. This closes actually at the end of July. So if you happen to be in the area and you would like to come and see these works in person, please, um, please send me a message and I can make sure that you stop by and see them. So we have Bonnie Kelly and Anna Witted, who is an abstract painter. And Bonnie actually works in a wide variety of mediums. She's here with us right now. And so let's say hello to her. I'm going to invite her in here. And in just a minute. So um, this is my little dining room. And Bonnie has several works here on the wall. This is one of my favorite one. So hi, Bonnie. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a cloudy day, which is kind of nice. It's a break from the Tennessee heat. Yes. So, or in your case, the Virginia heat, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, let's dive into it and hear a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, your origin story as an artist focused on representational work and your love of the natural world. Okay. Well, the, re the whole reason why I paint animals and nature is because of my history, really. Um, I grew up in Nopesville in Northern Virginia, which is a little rural town, and we had a little five-acre farmette, and we had fish and parakeets and ducks and horses and dogs and cats. So from a very young age, I was always surrounded by animals, and I rode horses, I showed horses, um, all of my jobs involved animals. I worked at stables, I worked at pet grooming. So I've always been, like, my entire life revolves around animals. And then when I moved down to Southwest Virginia in 2006, um, my horses were getting older and I started showing my dog, because that's just natural progression. Horses <laughs> move on to the dog. <laughs> And so I'm always around the animals. They are really special to me. My best memories in life. All of my happy moments involve an animal. And so when I, it was just so natural to me to start drawing them and painting them. And all of these years of hands-on experience, it really helps because I understand the way they move. I understand their bone structure. Um, the texture of their fur, their personality, you know, how many steps it takes before they go over a jump that's in front of them. And all of this is really, it's really helpful when you're painting to understand your subject. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it, and you, it sounds like you have a lifelong embodied and almost intuitive understanding out of all of that personal observation and hands-on experience. So, oh, yeah. And it really, it really does show that level of attention to detail. And you can tell when somebody like understands how something is moving in space, but putting it on it. But I mean, the task of putting that on a two dimensional plane is really quite challenging. And even if you have that understanding, you don't necessarily have that skill. So it's really quite amazing what you've cultivated. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk about, you wanted to talk about um, horses a little bit, right? Because that's your first love. 
Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, so I'm going to flip around here and if I can do this and we're going to go to the, the main horse focus piece that you have currently on display. And then we also have a smaller one, but I want to focus on this one. So tell us about this piece. Well, I've never actually had a draft horse, but it's one of those things that I've always found really interesting, the power, the size, and they just, they're so gentle for such a large, large animal. And I always enjoy getting a chance to see them in action. And I went to the Russell County Fair when they were doing the draft horse poll several years ago, and I took some photographs of the horses and when I was going through them, um, I really wanted to paint one. And I had found this antique harness in a, um, an antique shop several years before. And I, I knew I wanted to use it as a frame for something special. And so when I had the pictures from the, the fair, I was able to go ahead and I found one that would, you know, the, it fit nicely in that frame where it was kind of tall and narrow. And, yes. Um, so it's it's done in acrylic and it's painted on um, plywood. Tracy, my boyfriend, cut me a piece of plywood that fits just perfectly in there, and so we've you know I painted it on the plywood and it it's big and as you know it's really heavy. <laughs> it's really well, heavy. It has to be in order to match wits with the animal in question. So yes. Um, I think what's interesting to me about that particular piece is that for people who are unfamiliar with working with animals, the, the harness itself, because you have the antique harness and because you've depicted the antique harness, it's almost like you invite the person to imagine the animal at that scale from within that piece, which is part of what makes it um, not, I mean, not only are you making that connection of like, this is the harness and representing it, but um, it very concretely makes people imagine it for themselves. And that's really useful. Um, when you've seen it in person, um, actually, that is a harness for a small horse. <laughs> so if you can imagine, a draft horse would probably be, tw his neck would be, you know, twice that size. I and know. And yeah, I, I'm an urban girl. I, I grew up in a city. And so um, I only saw police horses, which were large. But, you know, you, you see them in passing and you don't mess with them. You know, you're not allowed to touch them. So, yeah, that's my only visceral experience, personally speaking. And so you end up not being acquainted with that. So the fact right. that it's a small horse is yeah. very intimidating. <laughs> they are, are there any other pieces that you would like to specifically talk about in the gallery? Um, maybe the bluebird behind you. Okay. Let me flip it around. So tell us about this. Um, I took the picture of the bluebird. It was outside of my studio window. It was actually sitting on the um, TV antenna. So I put it on a more attractive um, branch <laughs> for the drawing. But that was one of my first colored pencil pieces. And I didn't realize how long it was going to take until I actually, you know, really got into it. Um, I'd say that piece probably took about 25 hours and it's just an eight by 10. It's not real big. Um, but I, I was having the best time using the colored pencils. I, I love the way that you can layer with them. They're just different than paint. Um, I'm actually here's, starting. Here's the contrast here. So there's the. Yeah, I mean, that you was. Do, you just, do a beautiful job that, in both. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really loving the colored pencils. I feel like I can get so much the tinier detail. Um, and they're just really fun to work on. And I love the colors of the birds. Um, I just enjoy being outside. I like to go hiking and you know, we live out in the mountains and it's just beautiful. So anytime I can bring a little bit of nature into my art, I like to do that. I think it's special. It makes people think about the relationship they have with nature and animals. And maybe they will notice something in what, in a drawing because it's not moving that they haven't noticed before, you know, and when nature's right in front of them. 
No, you have a very attentive eye and um, it really shows. So are there any animals in particular that you most enjoy drawing in aside from horses? Because I know that that's your first. That's my first love. Um, mm-hmm. Probably the dog. Uh-huh. Because dog, dogs are everybody's best friend, right? Um, well, I think I only have one piece that has a, you know, a four-legged dog companion in here. Here we go. And this is the one that you brought with you this time, is yeah, this face. That's a Vizsla. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a big breed. But most of the dogs I paint are commissions for people, so I don't keep those pieces. Um, I don't usually have too many dogs just hanging around here. Um, <laughs> Well, if you were if you were working on that many dogs, you would have you'd be running a different business, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so tell me a little bit about your pet portrait business and some of those details for the audience who might be interested in your amazing talents of rendering these things so delicately. Well, thank you. Well, I do. I take commissions, and I will draw your pet. Um, <laughs> I work from photographs that you send me, and. Uh, I, I have small pieces. I do some tiny art, which is really popular around the holidays. They're little mini canvases. They're only three by four inches. Mm-hmm. Um, they're only $38, um, and that's including the shipping. So wow, that's, that's something that you can give as a gift um, and have it be really special and personal, but not cost a fortune. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if, if you wanted something larger, I have... You know, six by six, eight by ten, eleven by fourteen. Um, okay, and so I'll I'll make sure that I include those details. If you like, if you want a custom pet portrait. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm your you girl. Know, <laughs> you know, hit up. What's the and largest have, commission that you've ever done? Well, I'm actually working on it right now, and it's a Christmas gift, so I can't really share any details. But it's two feet by three feet, and it's okay. Well, pencil. the size is enough. Because let me see if I can think about a two feet by three feet. All of um, all of your um, your co artist pieces are larger than two They're feet cute. by three feet. Yes. So um, I don't really have a good example for a scale, but well, it, um, it's big for me. <laughs> I'm a smaller smaller painter. Um, yeah. Well, and for those of you who really admire this piece or any others that you are seeing as I'm touring the gallery, there are actually several prints available of these works. So, um, you know, for whoever ends up watching this later, you can, um, you know, hit Bonnie up for some for some prints of other things, depending on what's oh, available. Yeah. So now th- we didn't have a chance to talk about this particular piece up here last time. So tell me about this because this is a totally different process than any of the other works that you have in the show. And I'm going to flip it around so we can see the detail. It is. It's that's called quilling or paper filigree. Take these little itty bitty strips of paper and roll them up and glue them together. And I've seen it done before and I just wanted to try it. And because I don't always think things through, (laughs) <laughs> my idea of an excellent um, piece to try was this giant large thing. I thought I'm going to do all of the animals that I see at Clinch River State Park when we walk and it's going to be so neat and it, I worked on the heron for like, two days and then I was thinking oh this was a bad idea <laughs> uh- <laughs> but I finished it I started it I probably won't ever do another one but I just wanted to try something different um, it was, I just wanted to give a different medium a try. So, yeah, I mean, I there's still like, you know, there's still a whole lot of knowledge and attention to detail that you've put into this that is clearly evident. And that at least I can see the connection between that and this, at least in terms of personality and dedication to the, <laughs> to the details. So like, I mean, of course, anybody who was watching the video is not going to be able to see this very well, which is why I always invite people to come by. We have the open house happening on next Thursday in the evening. So if you want to actually come visit the gallery and see Bonnie's detail, because I'm live video just does not do it justice at all, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to plug that for a minute. Anyway. That's good. <laughs> 
Are there any other um, pieces that you would like to discuss? I know that you had a whole list of topics, or maybe you want to take us on a studio tour? I would love to take you on a studio tour. So okay. I'm going to Let's try to turn the camera around so I don't fall over. I have to walk into the house. So give me just okay. a second. Um, so you work out of your house. That's a good thing. To I know. do. I do. Okay. And there, there's my little hummingbirds. Oh my goodness. There's so many of them. There are. I love, sometimes I work outside on the deck with colored pencils. Um, cause it's, yeah, they're just really fun. Um, and there's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but part of why I love, I mean, you can just see, we've got a beautiful view up here. Oh yeah. And so, I mean, I'm all, I look outside and I see so many animals just, just on the farm here. Um, so you're literally mining your, your own environment and giving homage to your own environment too. That's a really wonderful thing. All good artists do that. So well, I've, it's easy when you live in a beautiful area, I think. <laughs> um, but this is the spare bedroom and we've turned it into my art studio. Wonderful. And, um, I cleaned it up a little bit, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've got, I, I have actually a lot of art on the wall, which inspires me. Um, these pieces over here are from Marsha Piner, Fine Art and Illustration. And she was my high school art teacher. Oh, wow. And we've, we've stayed in touch and she just does beautiful work. So I had to have some of her art on my wall. Um, and then this was a piece by artist Steve Messenger. And my mom made this. My mom shares her love of art and it's made out of a gourd. It's a wind mm. chime. And um, she's put horses on here for me and it's, it's the bottom half of a gourd. Um, and then that's my horse, Winnie. Um, oh, wonderful. One of, my, one of my coworkers did that for me in watercolor and this one up here is Angela Baker. She's in Abingdon. And I picked okay. this up at the 6 by 6 art fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, and a little piece by Susan Carmen Duffy. And all of my horses I collect. Oh, my goodness. I collect model horses. Um, they wow. are literally all over the entire house. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where I work. I have my computer set up so I can view the reference photo while I'm working. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's my giant piece I'm working on, which I can't really show you. Oh, but that's okay. Can't but see I anything. Think, so all of that rack uh, in front of it, though, that's, is that all of your materials or all of your paints? And then you I've have got, this paint lit surface. Right, right. And then I've got more storage underneath. Um, Tracy built this desk for me so that I could work standing up or sitting down. And, um, we measured it and he made little little sections for all of the different sizes, canvases and blocks. Oh my goodness. That's so handy. So, I mean, yeah, it was storage and finding ways to make your workspace customizable are always huge artist problems. Yes. Yes. And, um, I've borrowed a little, uh, folding table from my mom. So I need more space since the entire desk is taken up with the large piece right now. I don't have as much room to spread out. So mm -hmm. I drag that over, set it next to my other desk and wedge myself in between there. <laughs> but mm -hmm. these are some pieces from Ellen Elms. Um, so how many pieces do you generally work on at once? Are you, do you, do you have like a sort of a process where you, you work, you work on one at a time or do you have large and small? I mean, obviously, and you've got multiple mediums going on. So. Right. I that usually like? like, I like to finish one at a time. Um, if I can, a lot of times I'll be working on the detail part of one while I'm putting a base coat on for the next piece coming up. But usually I just focus on one piece at a time and mm -hmm. I prefer to, um, when I work with my colored pencils, I have to clear my, my desk off and cl keep it really neat and clean. I can't have like little, as much stuff on it as I do when I paint. Mm. So I try to just do one thing at a time. Mm. And then you have to switch, switch gears a little bit, depending on what it is. Right. Right. Neat. 
Neat. Well, you, do you have some like favorite supplies that you want to share or any other like little details or things that you found especially helpful that, that you'd like to, you know, that, okay. that like really get you excited that like this, this solved a problem for me. Well, my pencils, my colored pencils, um, I love them. I use the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. Oh, wow. And like from far away, that looked like just a gradient of color. <laughs> It's so neat. I love it. I know a lot of people take them out and they put them in other containers, but I like looking at them all in their neat little row. So I'm, I always put them right back where they came from, <laughs> um, but they, they work. They're so nice when they go on. They're so nice and smooth. Um, and I love them. And then I found out um, you can use pan pastels. Oh gosh, I'm having trouble back and forthing it. Um, these pan pastels, they go on with a sponge and they're awesome for doing backgrounds on a colored okay. pencil. So it doesn't, you're not stuck working on that background for hours and hours and hours. You can finish like a nice smooth blended background pretty quickly. Mm. That was yeah, a game I changer. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not sitting there going careful, 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 filling it all yeah. in. In then yeah. 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 That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, are there any shout outs or like other, tell us some people who you want to like thank in your art career or local places that if we come to visit your area that you would really want people to see and enjoy. Okay. Well, um, obviously thank you mom and dad for, <laughs> you know, pro, I guess in encouraging the animal hobbies and mom with her art. She was always doing art projects. Dad just stood back and encouraged. He's like, oh, that looks great. Um, <laughs> but, and then uh, Mrs. Piner, uh, Marsha Piner, my art teacher, I stayed in touch with my North Carolina, South Carolina. And we're always, you know, messaging each other periodically and sharing our new art and what what art shows we have coming up. So that's really special to still be in touch with her. And then a really cool new project um, I had in mind for a while, but as you could see from outside, we live way out in the middle of nowhere. And I wanted to mm -hmm. create a small art gallery, sort of like a little free library. But most people put them at the end of their driveway. So who's going to come all the way out for that? Um, and the town of St. Paul had a public art meeting in February. And so I went, I proposed this idea for this small art gallery in town, and they were really excited. And they gave me a location to put it, and they had a nice little planter that we could attach it to. So I begged Tracy so kind, to build that for us. Um, he also built it while I was getting rope project. Can you go back a little bit? You're cutting out. And so I want to hear what Tracy, he built the small art gallery that's now in the center of St. Paul. Yes. Okay. And um, he, I, I just said he also builds the frames for a lot of my art. Right. Okay. But he built the tiny art gallery and we, we got it fixed up and we put it in, in town and you can go look at it. It's on fourth <laughs> Avenue um, next to the Western Front Hotel, and the fr the front side has a featured artist, so we'll be changing that out every month. And the back side is a little free art exchange, so anyone can take art and leave it there or bring it home with them. And I'm just really excited about the project. It's going to be a lot of fun. No, that that's wonderful, and. Um you're also bringing you're you're making a little exchange space for a a very spread out very small community but that's definitely going to bring people together and even i know that um you're trying to share it with people from around the area so that there can be a, even a regional exchange and that's a really beautiful thing so right. where should we go to follow that project on social media or how do we, okay. how do we contact that? That we have an Instagram and a Facebook 
page and it's St. Paul SAG for Small Art Gallery. So, so S A N T S A I N T P A U L S T. Okay, S T. I'm trying to put it in there. St. Paul S A G. A G S A G Small Art Gallery. Okay, so I've just put it in the comments. Hopefully, a bit it will yes. show up as yeah, a reference. That. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay, and <laughs> so, and and if you don't live local but you still want to be a part of it. I am totally open. If you want to mail your art to me, we'll put it in there. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, it was created with local artists in mind, but I'm not going to turn anyone down that wants to share their art. So, yeah, oh. just reach out. To me. We have a little application um, and just like a little release that you'll sign in an application oh, that, that tells was, about that's what you're putting in. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. Oh, that's so wonderful. Now, one last, th one last thing. Um, if we go to St. Paul, where's the best place to eat there? Okay. Well, there's two, <laughs> two, well, they're all good, but there's two um, restaurants. Um, my friend Jeff Booth owns one of them. It's called Fat Boys Barbecue, and he has the okay. best barbecue. And it's, it's cost effective, and you don't have to wait in line very long. It's quick, <laughs> and it's really good. Um, and he's let me put some of my photographs up on the wall there, too. Um, Oh, that's that's a cool and then if you're looking for um somewhere where you can sit down and maybe have a like some beer and a you know, just a more i guess fancy it's not fancy but it's more fancy than barbecue um the sugar <laughs> hill brewery sugar hill brewery and fat boys barbecue yep. in saint paul virginia if you happen to be yep. up there and Bonnie, I have to offer you congratulations for winning the award for being the artist that's been the furthest away from Johnson City so far in my gallery. Um, oh, hey. For the audience watching this, um, Bonnie has been a huge trooper transporting her work from a long way away. The radius in which I put out the art call for December was 250 miles, I think, from Johnson City, which... Is a pretty big region, but it also spans Virginia, uh, like a little smidge of Kentucky, and then like a smidge of North Carolina too, because we're kind of in this funny little meeting of the corners where we're closer to other states than we are to other parts of our own state. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that has its own challenges. So um, I really appreciate you being a part of this Virginia, Tennessee exchange and also, you know, coming into my home, eating my food and sharing your work with a fresh new audience. That's been a wonderful gift to our community. So I really appreciate that. Well, Jocelyn, you are the gift to the community for opening up <laughs> home and promoting art the way you have and giving us opportunities and sharing on social media and making these live videos. Um, yeah, you're <laughs> pretty special. <laughs> so if you all well, I hope have Make sure to go look at Jocelyn's art, too, because she is an artist and has a great newsletter and she works with Create Appalachia and this great eat art space. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Bonnie. Lucky. Yeah. Well, I hope that you can go and enjoy the hummingbirds. Um, I'm glad for the I'm glad for the cloud cover today, but I know it's not going to stay very long. We've still got August to get through. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank God for the mountains. Anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, Bonnie Kelly, you can follow her at Shamrock Studios 2017 or 2017. Um, please go and investigate your work. If you have an animal that you would like to have painted or if you are interested in photography for um, animal-related events and shows and things, she's the one to hit up. So, And you do travel quite a bit. So I do. I do a lot of uh, photography at dog shows and horse shows. So I'm out and about quite a bit. Yes. So anyway, and as always, if you want to bring home some of her work, link is in the bio. You can find her website. And Bonnie, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You have a great afternoon. Thanks. Yeah, you too. Bye for now. Until next right. time. Bye-bye.